Ah, the Aquarium Plant Bar. You might have passed one recently at your local fish store, full of bottles of top and bottom shelf spirits. That's your plants get a little buzz off of. And if they get enough of a buzz, well, yeah, they just might get their propagation on. Yeah. But what exactly are all of these bottles that you see? What are all these nutrients for? How do they work? And how do they benefit our plants? Folks, I'm going to do my best in a three-part series to explain my understanding of aquarium dosing. So coming up, a beginning guide to aquarium fertilization and dosing. This is part one or the first dose coming up. A quick disclaimer, while there are a wide variety of companies that offer nutrients for your plants, I will be referencing the Seachem product line in this video series. Now, it's not necessarily the most potent out there, but it is widely available and great for beginners. So why do we need to fertilize and dose in the first place? Well, it's true that rooted plants take four to 400 times more nutrients from the substrate through their roots. They do still consume and absorb nutrients through the water column. Fertilization is especially important for rhizome plants. Anubias, java fern, bulbitis, and many of your mosses all draw nutrients from the water column. Now in this video, we're gonna focus on macronutrients. That's these guys here, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And you may have read about aquarium dosing and heard a term called NPK. Well, this is simply referencing macronutrients, N, nitrogen, P, phosphorus, K, potassium. And of course, they're called macronutrients, well, because your plants use a lot of them and they need to be added to the water column. There are other macronutrients, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. However, in most municipal water systems, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur are abundant. If you have softer water systems or possibly well water, you might have to add calcium, magnesium, and sulfur to your tanks. So let's take each of these macronutrients one by one. We're gonna start by putting the N in NPK, that is nitrogen. Now nitrogen is an essential part of all living cells and necessary for the formation of amino acids and protein synthesis. It is directly involved in photosynthesis. Now most of us find this in our tanks in the form of nitrate. When you do your water testing and you get your nitrate reading, the plants will absorb that nitrate. In some municipalities, nitrogen can be considered a contaminant, so it might be deficient in tap water. If you have a zero nitrate reading, you may need to dose nitrogen to keep your levels up. Plants need 5 to 15 ppm. Let's put the P in NPK, that is phosphorus. Phosphorus helps convert light into sugars that plants use to feed, also an essential part of photosynthesis. It promotes early root formation and growth and it's involved in plant respiration. Yes, your plants do breathe. Energy storage and transfer and cell division. However, without adequate lighting, Excess phosphorus can contribute to algae growth, so keep that in mind. Putting the K in NPK is potassium, and this is a big one, folks. Plants require a lot of potassium, and it's important in protein synthesis, but more importantly, it helps plants metabolize iron. So if you are dosing your tank with iron and not dosing potassium, your plants are not going to be able to metabolize that iron. So let's talk about the other guys. We talked about other macronutrients. Calcium helps provide strength to your plant and it also helps your plant absorb other nutrients. It's abundant in most municipal water systems so not something you might need to worry about unless you have soft or well water. Magnesium essential to transport iron to plants so again if you're dosing iron without enough magnesium and potassium your plants will not be able to absorb that iron. Sulfur stimulates rapid plant growth and a lot of times it is deficient in municipal systems but it's widely available in many of your plant fertilizers. So coming up next in the series we're going to talk about micronutrients and non-mineral nutrients and finally we'll talk about a few dosing methods widely used in the hobby. The Den is now on Instagram at dmichaelsfishden just started posting there please join if you are so inclined as always please like comment subscribe for future content thanks for watching.